Hello everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Jamie, and in this video we're going to be flying the Fock 50 over to Tony Gore. Currently making my way from Terminal 2 over to Terminal 1 in Dublin, where this new route, uh, or rather resumed route, goes from today. It's going to be on Amapola, I believe is what the airline is. They're a Swedish, uh, I guess a regional airline that specialises in PSO routes. PSO routes are routes that the government and systems operate, and then put a level of funding in to cover any cost the airlines might have. This route in particular used to be operated by Stobart Air um, as part of Aer Lingus Regional. Aer Lingus Regional Stobart Air unfortunately went under last month in June, it might be May actually. Um, and the route that I'm flying today resumed only this week. Today's the 31st of July, it's a Saturday. And I think it only started on Monday. If you like the sounds of that, then please carry on and let's go on with the video. Am and Polar don't support online check-in and their website was a little bit vague on when and where the check-in desks were at Dublin. As it's a new route, the site isn't yet updated with the relevant info. So just a little update, I'm in the Q4 check-in now, which is here. Um, a little bit nervous. I, I came about two hours before and the check-in counter wasn't open, there wasn't any signs or anything, so I did a little bit of work upstairs. I've come back 90 minutes before and there's about 12 people in the queue when I arrived. Uh, on this particular airline, you cannot pre book a seat, so I am hoping there are some window seats left. Wish me luck. Hiya. Cheers. Thanks. Would it be possible to get a window seat? Thank you. Um, can I go with the left hand side? So, uh, hey, can I go towards the back though? Would that be okay? Thank you. Yeah, if I could. Can I get 10, please? I'm hoping that's a good one. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Cheers. Palpable relief, we have a window seat. We are in row 10 and it's 10E. I don't know how the seat map works on a Fokker 50, but I asked for a window and he said it was a window. Go to security now and there are 30 minutes to boarding. Security was a breeze here at Dublin Airport and it's still quite quiet. Here's our flight, HP331 over at gate 213. This is a part of the terminal that I've never used before, and it's nice to go somewhere new. Worth noting though, that the shops and catering in the 200 gates are still closed. Here she is then, our Fokker 50. So here at the gate now, we are at gate 213, boarding in about five, 10 minutes. Looks like it's a relatively light load. I checked in about oh, what, an hour and 10 before takeoff, and I'm number 15 in the boarding sequence. Um, I just have a proper cardboard boarding pass. First one of them in a while, actually. So I think we've just seen the, the flight crew having a bit of lunch before they head back to the goal. So hopefully they'll be back soon and we'll be getting on board. This part of the terminal is at ground level, which means we can walk straight out and onto the aircraft. Boarding started about 20 minutes before departure time. Hi, cheers. Thanks very much. Cheers. Let's zoom outside and get some photos before we board. Down towards the back of the cabin to find seat 10D. And welcome on board this Amapola flight bound for Donegal. I'll make myself comfortable and then let's take a look at the seat. The Fokker 50 is in a 2 2 layout, 
with these fairly narrow elephant grey leather padded seats. The seat legs are centred beneath the seat, meaning there's space for your feet either side, which could be bothersome if you want to store a bag down here. Legroom is more than comfortable though for a sub one hour flight. The tray table is a fair size but was a little bit wobbly in my seat, although as you can see you can fit a portable computer here whilst you're flying. Happily there's air vents and a reading light and the usual call bell for each passenger. The armrest in the centre features an ashtray, now that really is a throwback. The seats being short mean there's not much in the way of head support, but then again on a short flight you don't really need it too much. As always when you fly and particularly on a new aircraft type it's super important to read the safety card which looks like this on this Fokker 50. Oh and one other thing that I noticed later on, each seat has these metal sockets saying oxygen on there. I've never seen them before, does anyone know what they're for without stating the obvious? Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard this Fokker 50 bound for Donegal Kirkpin. My name is Ola, I'm the captain aboard, and to my right is Christian, and in the cabin you've already met Isaac. Yeah, we're trying to change our target startup time. We have it just now 11 minutes past the hour, but we're trying to get it a bit earlier. So we are ready to close the door and start up. We have a flying time of estimated for 40 minutes. We from the flight deck, we will get back to you when approaching Donegal. We wish you a pleasant flight. We managed to push 10 minutes or so early and tax it out to what is now runway 28 left. As we climb out you can see this brand new runway 2H right which isn't yet operational but ready to roll soon. We turn to the right and set course to travel northwest over Ireland. With the seatbelt sign off what does this 38 year old aeroplane Lou look like? Well let's go and find out. There's only one toilet facility on board which is right at the front of the aircraft and just behind the main entry door. The first thing that I noticed was the sink was unfortunately inoperable. It's spacious enough though and has this lovely big mirror. Here's another one of those oxygen holes. The bin isn't in an obvious place but you'll find it below the sink. About 10 minutes into the flight now. Um, flight's all right, it's a little bit cloudy down the below, as you can see. Um, I'm in row 10, which is probably the last row of where the engine cowling is, sort of the exit cowling stuck gear housing. So you might want to sit a little bit further back if you want some better views of Donegal. It's what I think so far, then. Um, it's good at it. It's nice to be on something that's old and nostalgic. So this plane's over 30 years old, I think it's 31, maybe 32 years old. It's older than me, so there's, there's a clue to my age there for you. Um, it is very plastic, fantastic. There's lots of white, now yellow plastic dotted around the cabin, you can see up here. Uh, definitely shows its age with the cabin fittings. It's a little bit tired, it's a little bit worn out. I think this particular aircraft was from Air Antwerp. Um, I think the Annapolis have only acquired it in, uh, sort of recently actually, to operate this route. 
it's nice to be on something that's old though um, and it's nice to have the opportunity to be able to fly on this particular aircraft before they're all gone. So one of the things that I've noticed trying to look out the window is the high the window is at compared to the seat. So if you look how high my head is, my head's sort of up here, and my eye level's about here. Um, I've got to really slouch down to look outside and see what's going on. So you can see if I'm down at this level, it's my eye, eye level, sort of looking at this cowling here. Yeah. Uh, but if I go higher up, I'll bring you up with me. I'll just tap the screen. There you go. You can see we're now looking down at the ground. Um, it's nice to look down. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter too much once you're in the air because you're looking at the ground, which is good. But when you are on the ground, and you try to look outside, you can't really see much because of that. Well, so it takes up most of the length of the cabin. Very similar to if you're the front on a Dash 8, uh, any of the Dash 8 range, really. You've got to either be right at the front or right at the back. Or on a Fokker 50, you've got to be right at the back to be able to see outside and look straight ahead. Speaking of windows, they're not the largest, but the window blinds do have this really cool branding on them. We're starting our descent now, down to the goal. I booked this ticket about two weeks before the flight using the Amapola website. Fares start at 55 euro one way, which is what I paid. For 55 euro, you get a carry-on bag and checked-in luggage, which I think is a pretty decent price. Because I'm slouching here so I can look out the window, just thinking about this aircraft and probably the history that it's had. Um, I'm not too sure of the full history of it, but I know it's about 30 odd years old. It's probably seen a lot of people, a lot of bums on seats. It's flown a lot of miles. Um, it's probably had a lot of heartbreaks, a lot of happiness, people going to and from various things. And then I got thinking, well, what's the equivalent today? And for me, the aircraft that's the equivalent of this one today is either the C-Series, uh, sorry, the uh, Airbus A220 family, or the Embraer E-Jets. Um, and I got to be thinking about KLM, and KLM used to have hundreds, I think, of these type of aircraft. Fokker Farm at Amsterdam. It must have made a massive difference when KLM retired this aircraft out of their fleet 10 years or so ago now. Yeah. Um, passengers certainly would have noticed the difference on it, and it just shows how evolution of aircraft changes over time. You've gone from this aircraft that was probably conceived in uh, the 80s, 70s, 80s, uh, similar to like the 757 and the 767. And then the modern day equivalent, you've got um, an EJ E2 family or the C series. I just look at how technology has progressed over time. It's fantastic to see, really. But it's nice to be sat on an aircraft that's it's got that history and you can see how things have developed and have evolved. Like I was saying earlier with the window height, we've now got aircraft with bigger windows because technology allowed us to be able to do that. Um, we've got better soundproofing in aircraft so it's a little bit quieter, we've got quieter engines. And just cabins, cabins change over time. I feel like cabin design and cabin interiors, they're one of those things that you could fit out this in, in a brand new cabin interior and it'll look brand new. And that's enough for me getting nostalgic. That's our 10 minute call. Ladies and gentlemen, we will short to be landing in Donegal. I kindly ask you to make sure to seat no surpass so Please put your seat in the upright position. Our approach into Donegal takes us to the north of the runway before turning left, flying parallel, and then turning 180 degrees to line up and face the north on runway 03. On a clear day, the scenery to land here is absolutely incredible. Even with this low cloud base, I still really enjoyed it. And it's not every day that you land right next to a beach.
Yeah, you're good. Mm. Worth mentioning, the overhead lockers are quite tight. You can just about fit a small suitcase up there, or a briefcase. Now, as I was about to get off the plane, every AvGeek stream, an invitation into the flight deck. Yes, please. Go on, you want to Whilst I wait my turn, a huge shout out to Isaac, who was more than happy to have a conversation all about the aircraft and told me all about the fleets and their operations up in Sweden. I do, yeah. It's, uh, it's only small. I know not many people who follow me, but. What's uh, name on YouTube? Uh, JT's Journeys. Okay, I need to write that. <laughs> Yeah, I and thanks for asking as well about my channel name and my Instagram. Shout out to Instagram, you should really follow me on there as I live story all of the trips in real time. I really need to say sorry for the poor video I took on the flight deck. I'm not used to being invited up front to film, so I got slightly overwhelmed. Noted though, I will do a much better job next time. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, come on. Now, as I was getting off, I did get called back on board by Isaac to take some better photos of the cabin and have it all to myself. How amazing is that? Here's some rather terrible footage of the cabin. Again, I'm sorry, I got a little bit excited, but I promise to do better next time. Oh, and here's seat 1A, which I think is actually the seat that you want to book when you fly on this Fokker 50 between Dublin and Donegal. Now let's head inside the terminal. Easier said than done though. All my messing about meant that I got locked out on the tarmac and had to wait a few minutes before being let in. When you arrive you'll come straight into the arrivals stroke departures stroke lounge area at this lovely little airport and then it's straight outside. There we are though, we're in Donegal. How great was that? So nice of the crew to let us uh, take, take some photographs once we got on board at the end there and do a bit of filming too. Brilliant, really, really nice of them that. So thank you very much, Amber Polo and your lovely, generous crew for letting us do that. That was an absolute pleasure to film, pleasure to fly. Um, thank you for coming along the journey with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. And as ever, please do subscribe. It'd be lovely to hear what you thought about this flight. It's been brilliant, I've had a great day out. Thanks very much for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. And for those of you still watching, here's the aircraft departing on its second day of the rotation out to Dublin.